Hello YouTube. How are you? This video is about Brefold's Law. Brefold's Law. The female, not the male, determines all the conditions of the animal family. Where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male, no such association takes place. Past benefit provided by the male does not provide for continued or future association. Any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit. A promise of future benefit has limited influence on the current or future association, with influence inversely proportionate to the length of time until the benefits will be given and directly proportionate to the degree to which the female trusts the male, which is not at all likely. Why do women do what they do, or more precisely, how they are capable of some of the things they do after all we have done for them. I will admit to a lifelong and fruitless search for the answer to these seemingly eternal mysteries, fruitless, that is, until now. In my research of all things on the net, I came upon a truly remarkable statement that explains much, if not all, female behavior. Freud said that no one knows what women want. That opinion remains true as far as I can tell. Like all truly great discoveries such as E equals MC squared, what I found that explains the unified field theory of women's behavior is elegantly simple. What I found was Brefault's law. Robert Brefault was a novelist, historian, social anthropologist, and a surgeon. He was born in Nice, France, of a French father and a Scottish mother. After the death of his father, Brefault and his Scottish-born mother immigrated to New Zealand. In May 1896, he married Anna Clark. The couple had three children, Lister, Muriel, and Joan, born from 1897 to 1901. Brefault receives his bachelor, bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of Dunedin in New Zealand in 1905 and commenced medical practice. After service on the Western Front during World War I, he settled in England, his wife having died. In the late 1920s, he, he married again to Herma Hoyt, an American writer and translator. The point of this is to state the credentials of the author and to show that this law has been there for many years. We just needed to find it. Brefault's Law The female, not the male, determines all the conditions of the animal family where the female can derive no benefit from association with a male, no such association takes place. Past benefit provided by the male does not provide for continued or future association. Any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit. A promise of future benefit has limited influence on current or future association, with influence inversely proportionate to the length of time until the benefit will be given, and directly proportionate to the degree to which the female trusts the male, which is not at all likely. No man can ever understand what is going on inside the head of any woman of any culture, including their own no matter how much they study, we should not kid ourselves. This is where Brefault's law is vital. All women association with any man, all women associate with any man only so long as they derive a benefit from the association. This cannot be stated too many times. A, a bit of recent data that supports this proposition comes from a recent study done in the UK 
the finding were that for a period from the early 1990 to the early 2000s, 90% of UK women practiced hypergamy. Hypergamy means marrying up. The hypothesis in the study was, do women exhibit hypergamy or not? If they do not, then roughly 50% would marry up and 50% would marry down. During the period of the study, 90% of these UK women married men that were more uh, made more money than they did or had greater wealth. The 90% marrying up rate provides ample evidence that the women exhibit hypergamy behavior. This behavior could, could be observed anywhere in the world and at any time in history. So let's get to the question, who is a whore? And my initial response, they all are. By default's law, if a woman is, associ is associating with you, assuming you're a man, then she is doing it because she sees some benefit, either current or in the future, from that association. Guys, let's get real about this. It is past time to take off the rose-colored glasses. How does this help? If you know going in that she is there to derive a benefit, then make sure you are willing and able to provide that benefit, that you are willing and able to continue to provide that benefit, and that the cost to you of providing that benefit is worth the benefit you derive from the association. Be fully aware that when the benefit to her stops, the relationship will stop. But do not have the illusion that continuing to provide benefits to your female partner is a guarantee for a continued relationship. Many females leave their male partners as soon as they think they can get more somewhere else with another man at a different place from the government, etc. Or for the simple reason of being bored. Have no illusions. This is true in the UK, France, America, Thailand, and anywhere else. So if you spend every dime in your retirement fund to build her and her, her, her mother a house in her name, do not expect that the association will continue. You must say no early often and often so you preserve your ability to provide and continuing benefit. If you drain all your resources, then you get what you should expect. Keep control of your money. Only you will be responsible with it because you had had to earn it. Any man that turn over his paycheck to a woman is a fool and would add, and I would add that giving a woman every penny you have in the world is just asking her to kick you to the curb and walk away from you. Deriving mutual benefits from a relationship is not a bad thing. Where we men lose the plot is when we expect past benefits provided to the woman to continue generating current or future association. Loyalty, loyalty, honor, gratitude, and duty are male values that we men project on women, but which very few to know women actually possess. We aren't born with these values. They are drummed into us from the cradle on by society, culture, our families, and most definitely by the woman in our lives, including you, mom. <laughs> women get different indoctrination, so they have different values. Mostly for a woman, whatever is good for her and her biological children is what is best. Full stop. So do not expect that the woman in your life will be grateful and sacrifice for you. Uh, when you can no longer provide for her and hers, and make no mistakes, make no mistake, you have never been and never will be part of what is hers. What, what are hers will be first herself and then her biological children, then her parents, then her siblings, and then the rest of her blood relatives, the biological imperative has always been to extend her bloodline. It stops there, 
and it always will. This is true everywhere in the world. Get over it. Men love women, but I truly believe that women are incapable of what we men call love. Men would die for their wives. How many women are willing to die for their husbands? Damn few, if any. How many men continue on in their marriage, supporting their family and their wives while the wife is making their life a living hell? Far too many. How many men choose their wives over their partners and siblings? Most. Women do not behave like this. I notice more and more men are against the idea of marriage, against the idea of giving their life away. Presenting Brefault's Law is a duty I felt I owe to the, to the readership. As a public service, we all need to take off the blinders.